Wow. Where did last year go? Uh, didn't it seem to just fly by at some parts? Now, the new year can be so exciting for many people. What does the future hold? Young couples planning to be married in 2012, particularly Laura Andrew and her fiancé Louie, and their wedding is going to be here on October 20th. Students anticipating finishing school, getting their degree, moving into the field that they studied for, hopefully. But for many people, the new year means more of the same with no prospects for change. For some people, it's just another year of getting older. Some people can't wait to be 18 years old. Some can't wait to be 21 because they finally have a sense that they're grown up. But those who look at another year as another year of getting older, they look at it as another year of being alone, another year of the same old thing. But please, I don't want you to go there. Stay away from that kind of thinking because none of us and none of us knows what the future holds. We don't know or realize the, the things that God is up to. And God is always up to something. So today, you have a choice. You can either look back for, for any reason, look back at the year with disdain, or look for reasons to praise God the Lord as we begin 2012. I hope, now I hope you're going to choose the latter because we have many reasons to praise Him for and I'm going to give you five from this text. So turn in your Bibles to Psalm 112 and if you're physically able to do it, please stand as I read through it. Psalm 112, please follow along with me. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures Forever, light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Take your seats. Now, isn't that, isn't that uplifting? Just, just from what this text says, just by, just by reading through it. This psalm is a companion to Psalm 111 and 113. And if your Bible reads... The same as mine. If you look at the first line in, in Psalm 1, uh, 111, what does it say? Praise the Lord. And if you look at the first line in 113, praise the Lord. 
The psalmist writes, because of God and his character, his wisdom, and how he works in the heart of man. So, if you want to look at your, at your notes there, the first reason to praise the Lord is because, reason number one, God still blesses those who honor him. Follow with me on your notes there as we read verses 1, 2, 3. All over again. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears. It means to revere the Lord, who greatly delights someone who takes pleasure in his in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright, which means somebody who is biblical, straightforward, will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures, which means to stand, remains forever. Wow. Well, the next thing on your notes there is the fear of the Lord has an awareness of his presence. I put a reference verse in your notes there for you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction now see what the lord is teaching us here is blessed is the man who fears the lord by always being aware of his presence and this means not only here in church but in your daily life also but i will say just as a pastor and i see and i hear what other churches do there uh, i will say that many churches today seem to have lost that fear, that fear, that reverence that we once had. Because society has become more casual. And I read this in the paper, I don't know, maybe back in October or November. But in the Wichita School District, and, 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 and tell me if I'm wrong here, that they were changing the dress code. For the teacher, for the, what, for the administrators, was that for the teachers too, or no? Unfortunately not. But, but, now, Jeannie, Jeannie's not here today, but those of you who are teachers know what I'm talking about. She, Jeannie was talking with us one day, and I know you have mentioned it too, of how some of these teacher, teachers dress nowadays. And so I was asking Jeannie, well, what are they, and what are they doing? I think, I think uh, the, thing, the article read that they were no longer going to be able to wear blue jeans. Blue jeans on an administrator or even a teacher. And the, Jeannie told me that some of them even come dressed in sweatsuits and flip-flops someday. You got to be joking me. And 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 here, society has become more casual. So in order to fit better into society, we 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 downgrade ourselves. And I'm not talking about you have to come. You know, there's nothing wrong with wearing a suit and tie, but it's not. There are some cases it's not necessary. But flip flops and sweatsuits. You know, I, there's a balance or something somewhere, but some have, uh, but, but see how we adapt to society because now our people who lead dress down and many in the church dress down because of that. And the thinking has been to make church more casual, more than, more than just a few churches now have a coffee bar within the church. Nothing wrong with having a church, having a coffee bar if it's if it's in an appropriate place. But many are right in the lobby, where you walk in, and the, and, and, the, and some of you some of you have seen that to where people come in to and sit in a church service with their lattes and their Danish. Excuse me. Don't I. I I don't ever want you to feel welcome to do that here. Never. Never. 
And it might be coming from me because that's my preference. And as long as I'm the senior pastor, yeah, that's my preference. You bet. You bet. But the text here, the text here is saying that having a personal awareness of him, the Lord, and delighting in his commandments, that's what we just read. Doing what he says without any delay, using his methods with a servant attitude and always for the right reason. Why? To glorify the Lord. He blesses those people who do that. How does he do that? Well, the text says, with wealth and riches, those people who honor him. And you know what? And, and, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody or any church. You know, no church is perfect. But I just have, maybe it's the way that I was raised, that we're here to honor our Lord. And, and you know what? Many pastors would, many, uh, many pastors, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but they won't even wear a tie. You know, and a tie doesn't make you holy and sanctified, but I wear a tie because I'm here to honor my Lord. And, you know, I'm nobody special in doing that, but that's, a, that's the way that I was raised. But it seems, it seems we've lost that reverence. And, and I know you mentioned one time uh, you were talking about the teachers and stuff, and you still purpose not to do what they do. You know? Now, uh, I always purpose that when somebody comes to speak in my place, and I always tell them, don't go up there with a pair of blue jeans on and a T-shirt. Because that ain't that that ain't flying with me, you know. So the fear of the Lord has an awareness of His presence. Do you know? Even though with everybody traveling today and some people are sick, you know what? The Lord is still here. Okay, He's still here, and we are here to honor Him. So. We praise Him for that. Why? Because reason number one, God still blesses those who honor Him. Well, reason number two, there are still character lessons to learn. Aren't you glad? (laughs) Oh, yeah, right. (laughs) Look at verses 4 and 5 on your notes there or in your Bible. Light dawns in the darkness, which means obscurity, for the upright. He is gracious to show favor, merciful and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts, which means to measure, his affairs with justice. So here you are, sitting here today, and some of you have had a tough 2011. You know how tough it's been for somebody? As I look out at my brother Reggie, who in this last week lost his, his wife. Many believers in churches all over the world today suffered through tragedies, through hurts and disappointments. Many, even some of you sitting here today, fell so deep into sin that many of your days were spiritually dark. You made a choice to forsake the teaching of his word to satisfy not only the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, but you have pridefully tried to make it on your own. Now, many of God's people are in darkness and their godly character is in question. This text teaches that the upright, those who fear the Lord, remember what we learned, those who fear the Lord delight in his commandments. It is they, it is those people who shine the light of of his character to others and to the world. They walk in obedience to his word and treat each other as he would treat them graciously. With mercy. Can I tell you something? Do you know how much of, of a difference you can make in someone's life if you treat them graciously? 
I stopped. The, I had to take something back to Coles the other day. My my wife and my kids. Now you guys can't say nothing here. They'll say yeah, it's so hard to buy for dad because he takes everything back. <laughs> so I took something back to Coles, and they've got they had a separate line they had a separate aisle for people returning did anybody go go back to any store this week to return something so the, so they had a separate line that you had to stand in to return the item can you imagine how long that line was it was long so i was so i walked in and i looked and i went oh well so i stood there graciously and tried to. <laughs> you, you, you would have been proud of me. So, so I got about halfway up there, and there was this lady who was uh, not happy because they had two people waiting, to, uh, waiting, w- waiting on people with their returns. And they had two people at the cashiers checking people out. But that line was like two or three people. You know, the line for returns was like 20. So she gets up there. She gets up to her because she's next in line. And she says to the person helping her with her return, let me tell you something, Sonny. She says, you see, though, you got two cashiers standing over there checking people out. They should be over here. Now, she had a good point, uh, you know, but the way she did it was all wrong. So then uh, the, uh, the Sonny, <laughs> he said, well, ma'am, he says, um, we realize that, and, and yes, they are checking people out, and we're, we're more than willing to help you and stuff. So by the time I got up there, it was, I said, uh, I had a girl wait on me, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to complain to you. I just smiled and said, thank you so much for waiting on me. I know. I, 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 I just sat there and go, I am not going to complain, even though somebody else did. I said, I hope you're having a good day from this point on. You know? It, it can make a world of difference in somebody's life if you treat them graciously and get yourself out of the way. You know? Has somebody ever done that to you, just made your day because you were in a bad mood? Or, you know, I know none of you are ever in a bad mood. But even if you treat them graciously, even when they don't deserve it, we can praise the Lord because He is always teaching us those lessons. Doesn't He? Then He teaches me those lessons. In fact, He teaches me those lessons when I need it the most. And, and he's always doing that. How to treat other people. Here, think about this. The, clo- the closer you are to him, the more him they're going to see. Does that make sense? Now, the closer you are to you, the more they're going to see you. Does that make sense? Okay. We praise Him because He is still teaching us. Reason number two, those character lessons that we need to learn. Reason number three, believers are still giving to advance the kingdom of God. Aren't you glad? That uh, that is a wonderful thing. Look at verse number six. No, uh, yes, six and nine. It's in your notes there. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He has distributed. He, he has, it should be, distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. Now, i got to read you something because when I read about generosity and lending people and, you know, people giving and stuff, one thing that just sticks, sticks in my craw is... Now, I was only a young boy, but, but, I, but I, I remember learning about this. Remember the war on, on uh, poverty? 1964, no, no, you guys wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. 1964, President Johnson, remember that? The War on Poverty? He signed a big thing with uh, Dr. King looking over his shoulder and uh, signing it, and they were going to stamp out poverty. Oh, you're going to love this. Since 1964, the war on poverty has cost Americans $15.9 trillion. While all, listen to this. While all the wars since the Declaration of Independence has cost $6.4 trillion. President Obama last year in one year or his first year in office threw into the war on poverty $888 billion in one year, more than President Bush spent on a war in seven years. Poverty has declined, but has never been below 10%. Fifteen point nine trillion dollars. Even Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he was the president for that time when this country needed him. Even he warned that welfare programs create dependence. Even him. Think about this. Think about this. Okay? A person who is... Because this is the text in verse 6 and verse 9. A person walking uprightly, fearing the Lord, delighting in His commandments, will often look for ways to serve and meet the needs of other people. Some people would wait to be asked. Some people won't give until they're asked. And sometimes they miss out on so many blessings. But we were taught to not only look, but listen. And many years ago, many, many years ago, back in the, uh, uh, back in the 1990s, we were up at Life Action at family camp, and there was a family who was sitting there with us reflecting, and we just were getting to know them, and they were missionaries with Life Action, and Cheryl and I had just talked about, boy, you know what, now we were brand new Christians, and boy, you know what, we need to do something as a family to support a missionary. Don't, don't just wait for the church to do it. Don't do that. If you're not supporting a missionary on your own, you need to do that and not wait for the church to do it. So so we're sitting there thinking, and, and Cheryl, previously, her and I talked about it. Boy, you know what? As a family, we need to support a, a missionary. And we were sitting there with this missionary couple from Life Action. And I said, so how's it going? Well, we're, 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 we're really praying about more support. That's all Cheryl and I needed to hear. And how many years for the Rensburgers now have we supported them? Uh, since 1996. You have to not only look, but you have to listen. We praise Him because God places that desires, that kind of desire in the hearts of His people. And that their generosity from, from verse number 6, the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. That legacy lives on forever. And the Rensburgers, we, they, they've always, every time we go back up to Life Action, they always take us out to dinner. They show us around. They, uh, they, they graciously kind, uh, kind of dode all over us. And we don't give them a lot of money, but as a family, we purpose to support a ministry and a missionary, and they happen to be it. Reason, so, reason number three, believers are still giving, and, uh, and uh, they are. Believers are still giving to advance the kingdom of God. Reason number four, we have nothing to fear. Oh, aren't you glad? We have nothing to fear. Verses 7 and 8. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, steadfast, trusting. 
which means having confidence in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. Oh, one thing I still get a chuckle out of, and I don't mean to make anybody mad here, is that this time about uh, 12 years, about 12, 13 years ago, when it when the clock changed from 1999 to the year 2000. Oh, oh, oh man, remember that? Oh, we had people putting food away. Man, we had people storing jugs of water in their basements. Man, we, we had people buying generators. We had people putting faith in the news and even their computers. They even had people moving to compounds with their own generators and with their own food. Oh, come on, can you know this? Some of you did. Some of you did this stuff, didn't you? Don't say yes. Don't raise your hand. I wouldn't. Some people even even said that uh, that oh, and when they moved to the compounds, they armed themselves with artillery because you know what? The goonies were coming after them. They said that modern technology would be finished. Even cars, even the computer chips on your cars would stop working. And all all of our watches that run by a chip would stop working. No more radios, why? Right? Cuz all the radios are where are all the new ones are computerized, you know? They've got a chip in them. They've got, you know, electronic key. No, gone. No more radio. Anything electronic, boom, gone. Such foolish Americans. Someone who honors the Lord, delights in His commandments, who learns the character lessons that God gives him and lives by them, so much that in the light of the gospel... They live, it lives through them and through them so much that they are looking and listening for the opportunity to bless someone and share with them the good news. This person has a heart that is firm in the confidence in the Lord. He is always steady, not afraid of what the world or others might say. And I know, and, and listen, I, I'm, I'm taking nothing away my grandparents lived through the depression. I and I remember going down in the basement of my grandparents' house in the brick bungalow in Chicago and seeing food on shelves because they grew up with nothing. What I'm saying here is something totally different. Why? Because people, especially Christians, were panicking at Y2K. Christians. We praise the Lord because in Him we have nothing to fear. Nothing. Reason number five. The wicked, oh, this is a good one. The wicked will ultimately perish. Aren't you glad? Amen. Verse 10. The wicked, which means someone who is hostile to God, the wicked man sees it and is angry. He's indignant. He gnashes his teeth and melts, which means to dissolve, vanish. He melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. I put a verse there, uh, Psalm 37:10. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. Now, listen to this. I just want you to picture this. Okay, get the picture here. Some, some people purpose in their heart to honor the Lord. Some people purpose in their heart to delight in His commandments. Some people purpose to learn the life lessons that God is teaching them. As they grow, their spiritual character is becoming more and more godly. They're purposing to choose to meet other people's needs without being asked. They walk uprightly, treating others as God would treat them, not fearing anything, because why? Their confidence is in the Lord. 
looks pretty good, huh? The picture here in this last verse is someone who is just hostile to God. And, 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 and here, this hot, the, the wicked is seeing this happening. It's seeing a godly person delighting in God's commandments, doing whatever God wants them to do on God's timetable, and they hate it. You ever run into those people? Oh, they can't stand you. Because they see how you live and what your principles are. But we can praise the Lord. Why? Because those wicked people, you know, the ones who purposely do evil and make life miserable. Did you see the newspaper the other day about that commentator that, uh, that uh, came out against uh, Tebow? You know, the quarterback for Denver Broncos? He said some horrible things on Twitter about God. He even cussed, he cussed at God. You know what? We praise the Lord because those who are wicked, who purpose to do evil and make our lives miserable, those people are going to fade away. That's what the text says. So now, you've got five reasons to praise the Lord as the new year begins. And the Lord is still on His throne in heaven, ladies and gentlemen, working out His plan to completion. Aren't you glad? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before You. Oh, we praise You, Lord. We praise You for who You are and everything You're doing in our lives, Lord. We praise You. We praise You, Lord, because You bless those who honor You. Lord, we thank You for that. We thank You so much. Lord, we praise You because You keep teaching us character lessons, even the ones oh, we don't want. Lord, we praise You, Lord, because believers, Your children, are still giving to advance the kingdom of God. Lord, we praise You because we have nothing to fear. And Lord, we praise You because the wicked will ultimately perish. Lord, we thank You for everything You do for us. You are most gracious and kind. And Lord, I pray for each and every person here that they would look upon this year, this new year, with anticipation of what mighty works You are going to do, not only within our country, but within their own lives. And Lord, may You receive all the glory for that forever and ever. Amen. Lord, may you receive all the glory for that forever and ever. Amen. Lord, may you receive all the glory for that forever.